Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another magic show. It's a nice place, isn't it? Not exactly Chevening House, but it's home, you know. And we have a marvellous audience today, all agog with excitement. They're all sitting on the edges of their seats. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Are you enjoying it so far? I've found out why ladies knit, you know. They like to have something to think about while they're talking. Now, I've got a, a, a marvellous trick here that will absolutely amaze you. Well, some of you. And I, uh, I'm going to show you a packet here, a packet of cigarettes. Well, the, just the sleeve part. We don't need the, uh, the tray, so I've thrown that away. And a balloon. Now, this is a fantastic trick. You will be amazed. Now, I've been doing this trick for, oh, for a year or two, and I've never known it go right yet. Now, I'm going to put <laughs> this balloon. No, it is a miracle. When I say a miracle, it's a miracle if it works. And I'm going to... <laughs> blow, talk among yourselves. <laughs> blow the balloon up. Inside the packet. Yes, I'm cringing a bit too. I don't like this part. Right, there we are. It's all blown up inside the cigarette packet. Now I need something long and sharp like uh, 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 a knitting needle. <laughs> Which I'm going to now plunge, plunge right through the balloon uh, and the cigarette packet and out the other side. And another knitting needle goes through like this. I push it through the cigarette packet. There it is out the other side. Isn't that amazing? How can they afford to pay this young boy? Now, there we are. See, I take them out like that, and like that, and... Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, I had to pull a few strings to get my next guest artist along, because a couple of days ago, he was 3,000 miles away. So, it's welcome home, Ted Rogers. Here he is. <laughs> What a magnificent tan. Doesn't he look healthy? That's not a tan. What isn't? Oh, hmm? I've just been reading the papers like everyone else. I'm browned off. <laughs> hey, but David, you've been doing some travelling as well, I hear. Yes, we ha we've had a marvellous trip. I've Where got you some been? super pictures all, all over the place. Look at that one. There you are in an eastern market. Isn't that interesting? That's beautiful. What are you yeah. looking at there? Well, uh, quite truthfully, we're looking at a sack full of live snakes. What a load of cobras. <laughs> But it is nice, isn't it? Well, they're fascinating places, street markets. And you had a good you know. time, huh? Yes, we did indeed. You know about street markets, of Yes, course, I don't. do. Oh, I used to work in one, you know. Oh, really? What, oh. flogging the gear? No, conning the people. <laughs> conning the people I used to do. The three-car trick, find the lady. Now, look, I'll tell you what. So, you've got an honest face. Uh -huh. Now, look, you've never seen me before, have you? You no, promise? Not very often, no. no. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, I want you to take that envelope and make sure that it's empty. Oh, yes. OK. All Show right. it to everybody. I'll make sure, sure it's empty. empty. All right? One empty envelope. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely empty. Now, yes. what I want you to do, sir, is to put one pound in that envelope. And I promise you'll get it back. Oh, that's different. All right, then. <laughs> You've got witnesses. One pound in the envelope. In now, the then, sir, just for a few copper coins, I'm going to double your money. Oh, yes? Yep. I'm going to put this pound in there, too. That seems reasonable. Now, yes? would you give me one fifty for the envelope and what's in it? For this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you're joking. <laughs> I mean it. Of course I would. There you are. There's fifty. There's one. And I'm delighted. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Super. You've just been <laughs> gazumped, you see. You've paid one fifty to get your own pound back. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. But then I can keep anything that's in the envelope. You can keep everything that's in the envelope. I'm allowed to keep all this, A lot. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely super. Thank you very much. That was marvellous. Will you, uh, put gazump me again? Oh, come oh, on. Hey. hey. I enjoyed that. You're in the wrong business, mate. You know that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Listen, Ted, have you ever been in a street market in the Far East? There's a Bombay motor horn, and I wonder if I could leave that in your care just for a moment, sir, because I want to show you something rather interesting. Now, it's good manners, and it's good fun to bring presents home when you've been on the journey. And I brought some presents home from the Far East. Uh, Alistair, could we have uh, some of those Oriental presents? Now, I haven't got one for all of you, because there are too many of you, and I didn't have the yen. So, uh, oh, they get worse. Now, uh, I've got some for three lucky people, though, some rather interesting interesting presents here that I hope you're going to like. And may I, uh, may I offer you a present, madam? Don't open it for a moment, will you? Would you hang on to this? Don't open it just for a minute. And would you like one, sir? We do take that, will you? And let me hold that just for a second. Now, let me explain that these are empty boxes. But 
Don't be afraid. Uh, I'm going to try and make something appear in there by magic. And you can have almost anything you like, you see. It's up to you to decide. I have some cards here with all sorts of interesting things written on them. Platinum cigarette case, for instance. Uh, jade earrings. Uh, you wouldn't want those, would you? Sofa and two armchairs and so on. And whatever you choose is going to appear in your boxes. You have, have a free choice, all right? I mean, uh, you can't lose. It's free, you know. You didn't pay to come in, did you? Right. Now, what I want you to do is to take the Bombay motor horn, and while I deal these onto the table here, sir, I want you just, whenever you feel like honking, honk. Don't be afraid. Have a good honk whenever you feel like it. Uh... Right. <laughs> I bet you feel better now, don't you? <laughs> all right. Now, I've stopped. Now, do you want the one I've just dealt, or do you want that one? You want this one. If you'd stopped me at, uh, if, you, if you'd chosen that one, you would have had a diamond bracelet, but you didn't. You chose this one, so you have chosen, sir, a Chinese cracker. And <laughs> by magic, I am going to produce now a Chinese cracker in that box. Would you like to open the box and have a look inside, sir, see what you've got there? Just take the lid off the box, and yes, we're absolutely right. The gentleman has a Chinese cracker, and what a cracker. And uh, if you like to put it on top of your television set, it'll look very nice. And don't crack the one about me, no telly, because we've heard it before. Right. Now, it's your turn next, madam. I'm going to deal the cards onto the table here. You can stop me. Oh, yes, you need the honker. Very kind of you, sir. You wouldn't like a job as stage manager. Really. Honk any time you like. Just stop. Now, do you want the one I've just dealt, or do you want that one? You could have, if you'd, if you'd said that one, you would have had a mink coat. But who needs it? I mean, it's much too warm. You don't need a mink coat, do you? You've probably got several at home. Now, you have won a Hong Kong dinner service by stopping me there. So will you take the lid off the box and have a look at your Hong Kong dinner service? Yes, there we have it. A pair of beautiful chopsticks, very nice for eating with, and a little Chinese rice bowl. Isn't that pretty? Of course, they, uh, as you... As you know, it's a staple yeah. diet out there is rice, and uh, I had so much rice out there, and it was so hot, I was starching my own shirts as I walked along. <laughs> right. So you practice with those. They're very good for everything except scrambled eggs. It's your turn next. Will you take the honker? And once again, just stop me while I'm dealing the cards any time you like. You don't have to stop me now. You can stop. Now, do you want that one I've just dealt, or do you don't want this one? You would have had, if you'd chosen that one, a bottle of champagne, but I think you've probably got something as, as good or better. You have... Aha! You have a Pekin streaking set. <laughs> Would you like to open your box, madam? Ah, yes. You see, the Chinese are very modest and they never streak in the total nutty. They always, they always have a few beads, even if they're any perspiration. So, there you are, your Chinese streaking set, and thank you, the three of you, for okay. being such good sports. Those are with our love and a little souvenir of the show. And and I hope you're all enjoying it. I see there's somebody at the end there who wasn't enjoying it. She seems to have, uh, she seems to have left us, which is a great pity because test that had all the excitement and tension of a Wembley Cup final when an Englishman became world champion. Now let's relive that magic moment. Is this the end? Let's watch it. Two twelves for Peter Chapman will win it, and that's very close indeed. That was exciting, wasn't it? And here, ladies and gentlemen, direct from the public bar of the Bird in Hand pub in beautiful downtown Henley-on-Thames is world champion darts player Peter Chapman. Here he is. <laughs> Come this way, other way, because I'm backed up against the bar there. <laughs> and I don't like being, I'm sure you don't either. Now, that was very <laughs> exciting, Peter. You must have been a bit nervous at that moment. Always nervous. Always nervous. But what a, what a dramatic moment. It was like a cup final, wasn't it? Beautiful. Now, tell me something. I noticed you had a cigarette in your mouth at the time you made that incredible out. What was the, how did you get out? What was it? Double two, 12. Double 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you find you play better with mm -hmm. a cigarette in your mouth? I think it's force of habit. Force of habit. <laughs> like playing in the pubs all this time. Yeah. All right, you're world champion dart player, and it's great to see you on the programme. And I would like you if you... Have you got any arrows with you? Yes, they're always with me. Never without? 
Mainly, <laughs> hardly. <laughs> While we've got you here, could we just see you have a throw at the board? We've got a board for you. Would you do that for us, Peter? Oh, sure. Thank you. I don't know if that line's in the right place. You well, have... not far enough. Well, you stand wherever you like, obviously. I just want to watch your style because I want to show you a little bit of magic in a moment, if I may. Thank you very much. Would you throw three? Nicely. Touching the wire for the cover system. That's not bad in a strange place on a strange board, and I've got a feeling this is a bit high. I want to try and show you something rather interesting, Peter, if I may. A little bit of magic that might intrigue you. I hope it will. Now, this is not a put-up job. I haven't asked Peter to do anything special about this. I haven't told him, actually, that the board revolves. Now, I'm not going to ask you to throw while it's revolving. The reason for that is that I want these to be three random darts that you're going to throw. A piece of black tissue paper, just tissue, stuck over the board like that, so that you can't actually see what to aim at. The board is still there. I'm going to spin it like this and leave it with the paper over. Now, would you take another three, but notice before you take them that I have an envelope up here with a seal on it. The envelope is there all the time and won't leave your view. There's the centre of the board. And if you would go for somewhere around the trebles, Peter, I'd be very grateful. Would you do that for me? Thank you. If they come out, we're doing them again. One, two... So you're still, by force of nature, going for the top. Would you come round here? Now watch, no cheating, while I carefully tear the paper away. Now let's see what we've got here. Now had that been in its proper position, those would have been, that would have been a, a wonderful score. There's 85. a treble there. 85. That's 85, is it? Mm -hmm. Have you scored 85? It would have been. Oh, been. no, no, sorry, you, it would I've have been. been. Not now, but no. you have scored a treble two, that's six, and another two, that's eight, and 15 makes 23. Correct. Correct? But uh, 23 is your score, but had that board not been spun, of course it would have been a much higher one. But I wanted this to be an absolutely random score. And would you take your darts out now? What was that score against? 23. 23 it is. Now that was, you will, uh, you will certify that, would yes, you? You will guarantee that that was a random score. Fine. Now, I showed you this envelope up here before we started, is that right? <laughs> and it's been in view all the time. I'm going to open it now for the first time, look inside, and take out a piece of paper. Perhaps you'd like to take that out, will you? Pull out that piece of paper, and will you let me open it up and show you what I've put here? Peter's score will be 23, signed David Nixon. And David Nixon. Thank you for joining us, Peter. And it's great to have a British champion, and I hope they have darts in the Olympics. At least we'll get one gold medal. And I wish you the very best of luck in all your, your future competitions. Thank you very much, Peter. Now I'm going to introduce somebody else who always goes for and do the coin trick again, but this time on an enormous scale, and it's very uh, breathtaking and death-defying. So let's have a look at the apparatus. Here it is, a rather beautiful, large Chinese coin. And if you think that this coin is large, you want to see their slot machines, really. Now, it's quite solid, it's made of very thick timber. I'd like a gentleman from the audience, would you, sir, like to come and have a look at this? Now, I haven't primed you in it any way at all, have I? Would you be kind enough, sir, just to have... This is inch and a half timber. It's very thick, very solid, and I want you particularly to notice that that hole in the middle is absolutely unprepared. It's not elastic, it's very solid. Have a good look at it. Don't be afraid to bang it hard. And I've got a piece of rope here that I want you to test as well. Just make sure that it's, it's very strong. Be examining that while I introduce Anita Harris. You mustn't examine Anita. Here's the lovely Anita Harris, looking very Chinese. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, love. Good. I'd like you to stand just about there, super. Now, here's the middle of the rope. Just have a look at that again, sir. Quite unprepared. All right, quite strong. I'll put it round Anita and watch this very carefully. I don't want you to think that I would pull your leg or deceive you. That is a genuine knot around the middle of Anita. As long as I'm not stopping the stream, you know, whatever it is. Put your finger there? Yeah, put your finger on it. That'll stop it slipping. That's it. Now, I don't want to stop the circulation or anything like that, but I have to pull this fairly tight. That's lovely. Thank right. you, darling. Now, we have some tape. Have you got some tape there, Alistair? I want to. Thank you very much. I'm going to put this tape around the knot, sir, to make sure that it can't shift. 
I'm sorry, darling. And then I am going to ask 18, 18 ways to know. I'm not. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> no, actually, I'm not sorry. I'm enjoying it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Give us a kiss. Oh, no, you... I'm working. Sorry, <laughs> right. Now, would you sign your initials across the, the knot there, across the tape, or a, a distinguishing mark so that you will know it again? Thank you. Now, you'll recognize that again. That's lovely. Now, I want you to take the two, uh, I'll take the two ends of the rope. Follow me, would you? You have no choice. I'd love to. Right, round to the back of the, uh, the large coin, and we'll take the two ends of rope, Alistair, through the hole in the middle. That's fine. Take, take the two ends of rope and pull them and thread them through the middle there. Now, will you hold those two ends for me, sir? As close in as you can, because we don't want to lose you on the camera. You see, that's, uh, sorry. Let's take that one as well. All right. Fine. So now we have the rope going through there and round Anita's middle. Fine. Now we have a cloth somewhere, don't we, understand? Yes, we do. Right. Let's, that's fine. Thank you. Now let's just get these ends together. They're not quite even. Just hold those two ends for me there. Will you do that, sir? Lovely. Thanks. So, and if you can stand about there, then we won't obstruct the camera. Now we have a cloth that we are going to put over the top of Anita, like this. I'll take this side and Alistair the other. This goes over the top like that and just pull it down to the ground. Keep hold of those ends if you will. That's another. Yeah, just keep it there. And then we can see what's happening. Fine. Now I expect you would like to be sure that Anita is where I said she was. So let's just lift up the cloth here and see if she's there. Behind, there's miles of it. Miles of it! Right, stick your head round the corner, Anita. There she is. All right, at the back of the coin. Fine, we'll drop the cloth again. Now, I would like you please next to come this side and start in a moment just to gently pull, gently pull on the rope, will you? Just ease the rope. Don't worry, Anita, we'll pull you through. Just ease the rope through. That's lovely. Yes, I think it's going to work. And here is Anita through that little tiny hole in the middle of the coin with your signature as before on the knot. Is that correct? Thank you very much for helping me. Thank you, Ted Rogers and Ronnie Dukes and Ricky Lee and Marmaduke. Dropped in. I think we've got some smashing magic for you uh, this week. And we've got a marvellous hand-picked audience. Very good looking this week because we're going to see them on the... And Anita, have they all got their jumbo? Yes, a few they more? have indeed. Have you all been given jumbo cards? Have you all got jumbo yeah, cards? Well, all right. Yes, well, will you wave your... Uh, jump? These are jumbo cards, by the way. I should show you. Look, here's a pack of jumbo cards. They're just ordinary cards, except that they're a bit bigger than usual, you see. And I've got a, another complete pack here. And everybody in the audience has got a jumbo card. And would you look after those for me? So don't let anybody touch them, will you? Scream if anybody comes near them. Thank you very much. Right, now I want you all to wave your jumbos in the air. Will you do that for me? That's right. Oh, what a lovely sight. <laughs> Keep it going, it's nice and cool. Now, you, uh, if you're very observant or if you've got telephoto television, you'll notice there are one or two duplicates, which isn't surprising as we have more than 52 people in the audience. <laughs> Work that one out. So we have several, several packs of cards, so don't be surprised if duplicates come up. Right, now we need a strong gentleman. Uh, Anita, would you pick a strong gentleman for me? Anyone you like, yes, surprise somebody. There's a strong gentleman. Oh, there's one. Would you? Oh, thank you very much. Don't keep him too long, will you? Now, I want you to officiate at the Chinese gong at the top, sir. I want you to take that gong beater from the rack there and just have a little practice swing, will you? Let's see how it sounds. You, you picked a good one? Yes. Yes, he's very good. Now, you'll see the idea later on, sir. I want you to stop the whole action by banging the gong whenever you feel fit. You're not a, a, a spy or a, a highly paid assistant, are you? No, I haven't primed you, have I, at all? Right, now, we've all got cards, and we need three beach balls. There's, uh, thank you very much. There's one for Anita. Uh, <laughs> thank you. One for me, and one for Alistair. Now, this is what happens. We're going to toss these into the audience. I want you to keep them on the move, please, for me, ladies and gentlemen, if you will. Just bat them around. 
Try not to hit the microphones, <laughs> please. No, it's rather important because otherwise they won't hear your laughter and applause at home, you see. <laughs> if we, we, we're very delicate. So keep them on the move until the music stops. And when the music stops, it's like past the parcel, hang on to the beach ball. You'll see the idea. All right, are you ready? Now, I'm going to pass them into the audience, throw them in, and away we go with the music. See, keep them on the move. That's right, keep them going now. Keep them on the move. Keep them on the move. <laughs> That's lovely. Keep, keep them in the park. They will all down on the floor. Right, so you might keep them up here. That's lovely. Right. Yes, lovely. Hold it. Whoa. Hold it, hold it. Grab a beach ball. Right. Now grab a beach ball. Now before I look at the cards that the... Would you hold the beach balls up, please? Now I am going to take this pack of cards. I, nobody's touched it, is that right? I'll take this pack of cards out from here and I'm going to hold it above my head and I shan't tamper with this pack at all. Now those cards must be a free choice. Uh, would you just, would you be very kind and stand up, the people who've got the beach balls, would you mind? With your jumbo cards, that's it. You can hand the beach ball to somebody else to look after. It's yours for a souvenir, you see, but hand it to somebody to look after for the moment. All right, will you do that? Now, will, will you for the first time show me the cards that you've got? Just turn them towards this camera over here. So we have the three of clubs, is that right? And the king of hearts, and what is yours, madam? The queen of diamonds. Queen of Diamonds. Uh, we have the Three of Clubs, the King of Hearts, and the Queen of Diamonds. On the camera left is the Three of Clubs. Now, this pack of cards is absolutely unprepared, except by a curious coincidence. Just before the show, I marked some crosses on a few cards. For instance, I marked a big cross on this one, the Three of Clubs. There it is. Will you examine that for me and see that the cross really is indelible? We had a, a King of Hearts chosen over there, is that right? Was yours, sir, the King of Hearts? May we see him on the camera somewhere in the pack here? I think I've got another... Yes, there is another card marked with a big uh, ink cross. The King of Hearts. Will you inspect that and make sure that it's not wet or anything and that it really is there? No other cards have marks on them except... What was yours, madam? The the Queen of Diamonds. Here are the cards unmarked, and I think somewhere near the... Yes, there it is. The Queen of Diamonds has an ink mark. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, there you are. In all modesty, I want to say, you haven't seen a trick. You've seen a miracle. <laughs> Now, behave yourself. Now, be quiet. Now, now. Uh, uh, Miss, Mr. Nixon? Mr. Yeah, yes, Nixon? I understand. What is it? Oh, oh, what is it? Mm -hmm. Your yes. first guest has arrived. Oh, Can I come out now? Yes. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, yes, it's my fine feathered friend, Mr. Ollie Beak. There he is. Our old friend. Hello, Hello Ollie. Hello, oh, Hey, nice to see you. Lovely to see you, David. Hey, David, what am I doing in this cage? What are you doing in that cage? Yeah. Well, it's for your own good, you know, Ollie, because, you see, we have a lot of magical apparatus all around the oh, shelves here. I... And if you've gotten to, you know, I mean, you might disappear in a puff of smoke. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just to keep you out of mischief, you understand? Well, that's the story of my life. You know, I had a very frustrated childhood. When I was a lad, you know, my mother wouldn't even let me go hoot at night. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you. I want you on your best behaviour today because I've got a very distinguished guest coming. In fact, he's a peer. Brighton or South End? <laughs> He's a peer of the realm, you know, he's aristocracy. How are you? No, he's, a, he's an aristocrat, a lord. And listen, when you talk to him, you have to call him your grace. Your grace. Mr. Oh, Mr. Nixon, grace. Mr. Nixon. Yes. Uh, now, don't forget, don't forget, it's, you have to say your grace. Your grace. grace, right, right, right. Grace. grace. Uh, who is it? Uh, Mr. Ray Allen and Lord Charles. Oh, splendid, show him in. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Well, it's no, it's always nice to come along. You know that. Who, who are you talking to? Well, you you remember, Mr. Nixon? I don't even remember last night. <laughs> you know, I went out last night, my dear fellow. I painted the town red. Uh, going out again tonight, give it a second coat. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Oh, what the, what's it? Is that you? That? What? That you doing? Ooh, right. Uh, 
No, it's not me, no. Ooh, what the hell's that? Well, it's a... It, <laughs> it's an owl, as a matter of fact. Yeah, well, well who, uh, who's howling? That's what I want to know. Uh, Shocky, somebody under Ooh. there, isn't there? Uh, don't carry your cunning concealer. <laughs> that's uh, that's Anita Harris under there, is it? <laughs> you better let her out. She might stuff the coat. Show the case. Look, there, look who it is. By Joe, it's not a. It, good Lord! <laughs> Some rotters put a beak on that cat. <laughs> That's a ruddy cat. Take the cage off, David, yes, would you? Yes, sir. Cool, that's better. I felt like a jailbird in there. <laughs> a bird? Good Lord. You mean... That's not a... It's not a pussy cat, you silly ass. What? Oh, look at it. It's a talking dicky bird. Yeah, at least I can talk for myself as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I should explain that um, Ollie is an owl. An owl? Yeah. Good grief. I knew an owl once, you know. Did you? Yeah, I knew an owl. He used to live in an oak tree at my father's country seat. Oh, really? Where was your father's country seat? In his country trousers. <laughs> <laughs> That's damn good, isn't it? We've got a little joking dicky bird. Yes, by joke, you ought to go on new faces, you know. I'm I'm a star, I'm a star. I'm a star. <laughs> no, that's not. Better not. That Tony Hatch should have all your feathers out. <laughs> Ray, just before the show, you were telling me about a new act that you're getting together. Yeah, this is, uh, it's thought reading. Oh, I do a bit of thought reading. I'm practicing one with a pack of cards. Can I show it to you? No, I'd love to see it. This yeah. is quite a clever little thing. Look, I've got a pack of cards here, yeah. and I'm going to shuffle them, give them a really good shot. His name was Oswald, you know. Oh, your father? No, the owl, you fool. <laughs> oh, was he posh like you? Posh? My joke. Used to sit in the tree all night and say, To wit, to whom? <laughs> to wit, to whom? <laughs> That's difficult to say, isn't it, eh? <laughs> Rick, I want you to date one of these cards. Oh. Just one card, anyone, look at yeah. it. Oh, no, I've got two there, hang on. Remember right. it. Yeah. And put it back. Yes. That's it. Now, remember your card. And I'm, 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 hey, I'm Charlie, going to the card. Charlie, boy. Just... Well, don't say Charlie, say your grace. Oh. For what I am about to receive, <laughs> may I be... Oh, stop messing about. Don't show me up like that. Sorry. Now, look, remember your card and think hard about it. Think very, very hard while I shuffle. I'm going to think. Oh. I say, uh, Oliver, do you, do you play cards at all? You know, Shannon de Sard, Dacarac, that sort of thing? Oh, I like a game of Snap. Oh, Snap, yes. Damn good game, there. Had, a, had an Uncle Reggie, you know, he used to play Snap. With the chambermaid suspended down. <laughs> Cheeky old devil. He was, he was a devil with the birds. No offence, of course. Yeah, that's all right, Charlie. Ah, there we are. Now, is that your card? Is that the one you chose? That's it, that's the card. Yes, the six of hearts. Absolutely well, right, you yeah. were. Oh, oh Davey's so good with the cards, isn't he, Charlie? Oh, old Dixon, yes, damn clever. <laughs> Oh, you know, I knew him when he was a sergeant in the police, you know. Oh, I? Yes. <laughs> you remember Doc Green? Oh, Doc Green, yeah, I saw him the other day. His surgery is just up the road from my tree. <laughs> really, what a coincidence. Just hold it a second. Do you mind? This is interrupting everything. David and I trying to do the trick there. You're getting all confused. It's not Dixon. This is David Nixon. I know who it is. <laughs> I've known you for years, haven't I, my dear fellow? Certainly, yes. And I must say, in all these years, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lord Charles. Very kind of you. Silly arse, he thinks I'm paying him a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't come here to be insulted. Oh, where do you usually go? <laughs> Another Far Eastern souvenir, a pretty thing, like two little wands almost. Silk, hand-painted, this time from Tokyo, a geisha girl. Very beautiful, that. Of course, geisha girls are storytellers. And we have somebody with a very romantic story to put 
Thank you very much. And I want to thank you people, too, for hundreds and hundreds of letters during the run of the series. Honestly, I'm a bad letter writer, and the piles about that high on my desk, I'll try and answer them eventually. Forgive me, you know, it takes time. And a lot of people have asked, what are all these curious objects on the shelves and the library of my magic parlour? Well, the answer is that they are antique magical properties or apparatus you see and uh, everything around here is antique actually no disrespect I understand um, my wife is very fond of antiques she's barney about me you know and of course the older I get the more she likes me um, I wonder if you would mind nipping up the stairs in your inimitable manner Alistair and fetching the Nicola tray and the rings and the little dish certainly Mr. you know he knows the one I mean yes uh, look now take a look at this this the, all these things around the table here are part Part of the collection of a good magical friend of mine called John Polfram, and this is a very old conjuring set uh, with beautifully wood-turned props here, and complete with a little magical dagger here. You know the old theatrical. I hope it works, won't it? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! I'm wounded. You know, don't try it with a real knife because you'll do yourself a mischief. Mr. But the, Nixon, yes? Mr. Nixon, I, I can't find it. Which one is it? At the end there, the, the tray at the end with the... the with oh, the, the one on the end. Get oh, yeah, away. Oh, go and hey, find your own yourself, What do you stupid think stupid you're doing? Honestly, honestly. Your sticky fingers off. Oh, he gets into more trouble. Now, if you're old enough, you probably remember the sliding die box. This is a great favourite of the Victorian um, magicians, the old sliding die box and this is the, the the magic casket you know where you show the thing lovely prop this beautifully made crystal casket and you blow on it and all those little flowers are, appear in the middle like that and uh, they most of them work very well considering their age this is the old coffee vase which I won't stop to do now partly because it takes time and partly because I don't know how to do it and this uh, <laughs> little cannon <laughs> I never got around to it this little cannon was made by a craftsman years and years ago just for making a ring disappear in a puff of smoke. All lovely stuff. Mr. Nixon, yeah. I, I, I was set upon by a mad bird up there. You should be so lucky at your age. <laughs> now, this, if I showed this, if I showed this tray and, and these rings to a magician, either amateur or professional, he would immediately say, ah, yes, Nicola, because these are the Nicola rings. All these loose brass rings, do you see them? And I'm going to tip them into this glass tray, like that. Thank you very much, Alistair. There are the rings. Toss them into the air. And hey, presto, they all go to the A magical invention of many years ago. This is a beautiful, it's more of a toy, really. It's, it's quite lovely. Invented hundreds of years ago. Maybe have the lights down, please. It'll show this better. Alistair, would you just hold that? Uh, have you got the other hand with you? Well, this one. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, it'll show it up now. Right. Now, <laughs> Was there, there wasn't a reason, was there? No, no, there I thought perhaps I'd gotten in, in trouble. Well, that... I used in rehearsal. I <laughs> thought he was holding something in the other hand. You can never tell with him. Was... Right. Now, we have seven little sticks of bamboo, you see, and seven strings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But if I slide this along here, we have four strings. Isn't that pretty? Or even six strings? Three strings? Five? Or perhaps just two. Nice, isn't it? Invented hundreds of years ago, that one. I brought the coffee, Mr. How Senior. kind you are. How kind, Alistair. This is a lovely little thing, too. Look, a little metal coffee cup made by another craftsman all those years ago. A, a very... A, a very popular pantomime trick, this, where you fill your, coffee, your cup with coffee and then you throw it over the straight man like that, you see. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yes. And... Ah, yes. Th this... Uh, w one of my favourites, a little bit of apparatus made many years ago just to make a card disappear. There's a card. A playing card. You pop it in the frame. Really there. Piece of tissue paper in front of the frame and blow it away and the card. I don't often do tricks twice, but I must do this one again for you. Give you a second chance to see how it's done. Look, card in the frame. There it is. Bit of tissue paper in the front of the frame, just like that, and blow it and the card has completely disappeared, leaving the little frame empty. Pretty thing, that. And this one I like. I don't know if this one's going to work. Uh, it's a very old prop, this, so forgive me if it doesn't work. It's a sheet of tin, and, and I haven't tried to improve it or modernise it or anything. And a large jumbo playing card with a, uh, a stick. In this case, it's a, an artist's brush that goes through it. You impale 
and the card on the piece of tin like that. Nothing at the back. And there's only one card used for this. Now I'll, I'll hold the brush from the back, spin the card, and the card finds its way completely with a little help from my friend through the uh, tin and out the other side. Now, Alistair, let's have the... Let's have the... Uh, I, I, I must make the excuse that the props are getting on a bit like me. Now this, oh, this is a knockout. Oh, this was a great favourite, again, with the Victorian magicians. I have here a perfectly ordinary, unprepared um, uh, card star. You know, the kind of thing you'd find around the house, anywhere, you know. <laughs> now, I, in, uh, what I'm going to, I'm going to have five cards chosen, and then they will, I'll throw the cards in the air, and the chosen cards will appear on each point of the star, you see. So I shall walk around the audience now and have five cards selected <coughs> by five... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it will not now be necessary for me to walk around the audience and have five cards slipped. Thank you very much, Alistair. I must say, he's about as useful as an ashtray on a motorbike. I think this is really my favourite trick of all. It was beloved by the drawing room magicians, and I've got a specially soft spot for it because I first saw it when I was about six years old at a Christmas party performed by a very old gentleman in a hotel in West Cavon Sea. It's done with uh, an orange and a glass of rice and a stack of, of drafts or, or checkers or whatever you want to call them, and also a couple of, of tin tubes and uh, a spun metal canister and or vase vase or vase i think that was the original patter and this is what happens first of all i'm going to cover the orange with one of the canisters like with one of the tubes like this then i'm going to cover the wait a minute that's the other wrong way up isn't it that goes there and that there i'm going to cover the checkers with the other tin like that and into the vase in the middle i shall pour the rice so Please remember where everything is. It's very important. Let's listen to the rice. Just make sure it really is in there. Yes, I can hear that rice. Do remember, reading from your right to the left, we have orange, rice, and checkers. But if I do this, with a bit of luck, if it's still working after all these years, we have now checkers, and over here we have rice, I think, yes, and in the middle, one orange. Oh, Thank you very much. David, you've got some smashing photos in here, haven't you? Yeah, they're nice, aren't they? I'm very proud of these. They were taken on our trip out there in the, in the Far East. Oh, this I... one, Ollie, was taken on the tarmac of Delhi Airport. You see that? Oh, yeah. Who's the bloke shooting peas at the snake? <laughs> no, it's not a pea shooter. It's a kind of Indian flute, you see. Oh, I... And he uses it to charm the cobbler with. Oh, yeah. that, that snake you're holding, that looks a bit frozen stiff, doesn't it? Oh, that's not a snake. No, that, that was a, my own miniature version of the Indian and rope trick. I've got the same bit of rope here, look on it. See, look, nothing attached oh. to it, just a loose bit of rope. Yeah. See that? And I throw it into the air and it stays. Go on, pull the other one. Wait. <laughs> it takes a week or two sometimes. Now, now concentrate, Ollie. That's it, concentrate. Force yourself. There you are, look. Nothing cool. over there. Hey! God, oh, that's terrific. It out of here. All hey, the strain. You, oh, you, it's terrible. You, you yeah, couldn't see it. You like that one? Oh, I thought that was terrific. Could you think of a way to make me climb up that rope and disappear? Yeah, if I could do that, we'd make a fortune. Well, I'd it? have a go as long as you don't put me back in that blooming cage again. It can sometimes be very exciting in a cage, you know. Look, I'll show you something fascinating, Ollie. You sit there and you've got a ringside seat of what's happening. Watch this very carefully. Exciting? He's never lived in a cage. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Listening to my favorite Chinese music. Would you step inside the cage? I'd love to step inside the cage. This music is called in a Chinese temple garden, and all the old magicians used to use it, the Chinese ones. It's very evocative to me. I'm sorry about the perch. We're going to get you on higher perches next week. Now, are you comfy in there? Yeah. We must make you a little more private by letting, letting these bamboo screens down. Can you let that one down the other side there? Alistair, thank you. And this one up at the front here. That's fine. That hook's on there. Can you get it on? That's lovely. And can you give me the parasol? Thank you very much. I'll open the parasol out like this. I want you to hold this, Anita, just through 
Just would you hold that? Can you? Can you? I'm yes, trying to. Sorry, it, all okay. right, that's fine. Good. Oh, right. Yes. Give it a little triggle. Just. That's lovely. Right. <coughs> That's fine. Now hold it nice and steady for the moment. And everything is secure. The chain's all right. And I'm going to ask you to brace yourself, Anita, while they raise the cage into the air. Would you raise the cage, please? Thank you very much. What are you doing to me? Give it a triddle. <laughs> Keep it triddling. <laughs> now you're all right. Don't worry. Right now, over this way with the cage, just a touch, please. And you can drop. Oh, <coughs> you can drop it. David, it's all right. Are you sure it's safe? Yes, yes. It, drop the drop the parasol. It's okay. That's fine. You're quite all right. Don't worry. You're quite all right. Trust me, Anita. Trust me. Now then, are you ready? Are you ready, Anita? Just stand by and brace yourself, Danny. Right. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Well, here we go with another magic show. I hope you'll enjoy this one. I hope you'll enjoy it at home. You seem to be from the letters you're writing, and th there was quite an impact from the thing that we did last week, dropping the cage with Anita in it onto the concrete floor. And uh, one young fellow, uh, he's 11, Colin Batley from Bath in Somerset, says, Dear David, you are one of my biggest fans, and uh, I'm surprised at what you did to Anita Harris last night, because she's a fan of mine too. <laughs> So please stop squashing her flat. Well, uh, thank you, Colin. Just to refresh your memory, this is what happened after I put Anita into the cage. It went something like this. Now, she's just dropped the parasol, and we're moving the cage across over to the open space. And Alastair's bringing the Chinese gong, and she's shouting things out to me a little bit nervously, and I'm going, one, two, three, and this was the the final moment. Do you remember that bit? Well, Colin... Colin, thank you very much for your concern. I'm glad to tell you that Anita's perfectly all right. She's as good as new. Here she is, the bird in that gilded cage, Anita Harris. <laughs> I enjoyed seeing that back. Uh, tell me, how did it actually feel when it, you know, sort of went like that? How did you feel? Depressed. Oh. <laughs> I pr <laughs> promised you a reward. You got friends in. I promised you. I said I would, I would get you something for the wall of your flat. You said something oriental, exotic. She's doing a nut. Yes, she's getting us. No, I've got you something just like that. You Alice, there? Yes, let's see it. Alice, look. <laughs> a time. A Chinese picture frame. A beautiful Chinese picture frame. I'm not mad about the Chinese <laughs> picture. And they open this way, you oh, see. Right. There it is. And I've got something to put in there for you, uh, just to show you how it works. This is really a Chinese newspaper. All right? Right. So I shall pop the Chinese newspaper in the frame like this and close it up. See that? That's oh, yeah. lovely. It's very wardrobe. interesting, but not too exotic, is it, really? It, it's upside down, Mr. Nixon. Ah, that would explain it, yes. yes. Well, would you turn it there? I don't know how you can well, tell. Like the, well, oh, it's the picture. It's yeah. very clever. <laughs> now, we'll make a little hole in the middle and see if Ooh. you would like this oh, for the wall. How's that? Lovely. It's an ancient Chinese dragon, all right? It's beautiful. It's a little bit small, though, really, for the Well, look, the there's, a, there's another one here. It's, <laughs> this is the, the same dragon three months later. <laughs> Do you like that one? <laughs> it's a very large wall, though, David. All right, then. Try a little bit more magic. You hold this one, yes, Anita, I will. and pull either way. Oh! You pull. What? How do you fancy that one? That's the corner. Hold it up like that. Beautiful. Now, that's not bad. That's quite good. Lovely. Yes. It is beautiful, but it's sort of ugly at the same time, isn't it? I heard oh. that. Robin Nedwell! <laughs> Have you met Robin? Oh, mm. Have you met? Just what the doctor ordered, eh? Oh, hey. See, it's true, it's true. <laughs> All this doctor ordered business, you can't get everything on the National LT. Oh, no, Robin. great pity that is as well. Anyway, yes. look, I heard you were on a diet, David, so I thought I'd bring on a few little diet pills 
just to help you stick to it. How kind of you. Do, do they work? Do they work? What? They're guaranteed. Take 12 of those three times a day and your appetite's bound to go away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. What a horrible thought. Here, listen, with all these marvellous successes you've had, Robin, with the, uh, the Doctor's series, do you have any medical background? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've got a cousin in the Royal College of Surgeons. Really? What's he studying? Nothing. They're studying him. <laughs> do you find that you sort of, when you come off the screen, do you, do you live the part? What, do you mean like a real doctor, is it? Yeah. No, no, no. I still fancy the nurses a bit, though. Uh, no, oh, I know why girls take an apple a day. <laughs> Hardly fair, is it? No, these terrible things this fellow does to all the... I feel sorry for the patients. How would you like to be a patient for a change? Well, if Anita's the nurse, yes. All right, then I tell you what we do. We'll play doctors and nurses. <laughs> <laughs> like it, like it. No, but wait a minute. I'm going to be the surgeon. Now, I tell you what I'm going to do, Robin. Yeah. Now, you'll hardly believe this, and I've got it written down because I can't remember it. <laughs> I, I'm going to amputate your radius and your ulna without, uh, and she'll possibly remove your long supinator at the same time. <laughs> Some buying boggles. All right, then let's have the apparatus. <laughs> Alistair, the assistant surgeon. This is the apparatus. Very simple and highly specialised. Invented specially for the purpose. And it's really quite a simple. It's just a box. Now, what happens is, I would like you, please, to put your hand, your arm, through the box. In, in, whatever, this is a painless operation. I it, entirely painless. I've done it dozens and dozens of times, and I've never felt a thing. But if you're nervous... <laughs> look. A little anaesthetic, eh? yes, a little anaesthetic. We'll just screw that into the arm Ooh. and then a touch of the uh, antiseptics. Anti <laughs> that goes in here like that. Oh, I like it. I like yes. it. Yes. Oh, it'll, it'll help. Yes. That's it. Take off the excess and a touch of the, a touch of the old disinfectant. Yeah, we've had that around for a while. Yeah. Feel all right? Lovely. Now, pop it through. That's it. Yes. Stick it through. That's lovely. Yeah. Good. Now, this may be, in, in case some of them are of a nervous disposition, I think we'll pop the slide in the front because it can look you know, a bit yucky. Now, you can either have the hacksaw or the bread knife <laughs> or you could have uh, you could have the stainless steel cheese cutter, if oh, you like. Let's have the, the stainless steel ooge, yeah? We'll yeah. avoid blood poisoning. Huh? You've made a very good choice, I think. So we just pull oh. that through at that end and we slip it under there and pull it through Ooh. at that end and then with a little bit of luck, we cover this in case it's yes. a bit, <coughs> you know, a bit yucky and we'll see if we can uh, lift it out like this. Let's have a look now and see what's happened. By God! Yes, it has. Oh. Yes, it's worked. Wiggle your fingers. Make sure it's all right. Good gracious. Well. Oh, I feel faint. Wait a minute. You've stopped, I think. Here, would you mind holding that for a minute? Let's just prove that the, this is really ah. is... I know, you see, I want to make sure it... How do, what do you feel? Pins and needles. Oh, that's exactly what should happen. So we'll pop the slide back in again. And um, you notice that I did all that without actually touching your humerus. Did you uh, notice that? Yes, let me worry for a minute. So medicine. we'll put the, this cover back on again, push that in, and with a bit of luck, there you are. Instant transfer. Ah. Take it out. As good as new. <laughs> I would like you to meet my next guest. Her name is Cindy. Here's Cindy. Cindy, thank you for coming. Cindy is a sheepdog. She's very beautiful. She's, uh, she's owned by Mr. Victor Anderson and trained by him. And her mother and father are working sheepdogs. She actually prefers to be in show business. She did try being a sheepdog once. And she did very well, but the sheep had her in the pen four times, you know. <laughs> so she's taken up show business. And I think that she will perform for me. I hope she will. She certainly does for her owner, Victor, who very kindly said that I could present her. So we're going to try something interesting. A lot of people say that animals and dogs are colorblind. I'm not going to enter into a controversy on this. I'm not trying to prove that they're not. I just want to show you something interesting. I've got five stands here with colors written on them, and they are colored red, white, blue, yellow, and up the end there, black. Five of them. And at your choice, I would like Cindy to try and pick some out for you. Now, it has to be a random uh, choice, this. I, I do want you to be sure that I haven't told her before what you're going to say. I, no, I didn't say a word to her. So would somebody choose, a, perhaps the lady in the red dress here, would you choose a colour, madam? White. You'd like the white one? Cindy, do you think you could possibly pick out the white one for me? Off you go, Cindy. Pick out the white one for me. There's a good girl. Very clever, Cindy. Very, very clever, Danny. Very clever. 
Ah, marvellous. <laughs> Shall we try another one, Cindy, or stop while we're a success? <laughs> Let's try another one. What about the lady opposite there in the, in the spotted uh, Yellow. Back? The yellow one, madam? I think she might manage that. Cindy, <laughs> go and get me the yellow one. Go and get me the yellow one, Cindy. There's a good girl. Very good, Cindy. Thank you very much. That was a lovely girl. She does card tricks, too. Alistair, could we have the cards, please? Now, this you'll find very interesting. She prefers the card tricks. Actually, she's a, she's a thank you, a very good poker player. Very, very good. The only trouble is that when she gets a good hand, she wags her tail. So she <laughs> gives it away a bit. Now, I have got five envelopes, and they are absolutely plain and unmarked. And I have a royal flush in here. The ten of spades, the jack of spades, the queen of spades, the king, and the ace of spades. All the cards are different. I'm going to tuck them down and stick them in their envelopes like this. There's the, the knave, and there's... Oh, dear. <laughs> the second hand. Horrible taste. <laughs> the queen goes in that one, <coughs> stick it down. The king goes in this one, stick it down. You're not looking, Cindy, are you? No, she's not supposed... I don't want you to know which they're in, you see. And there is the ace in the last one. So, we have f five cards, a royal flush, in those envelopes. Absolutely plain, stuck down as... That's not a very good clue. Shake them up a bit, mix them up. There they are. The envelopes are thoroughly shuffled. I don't know where they are myself. Nobody can possibly know. And I want you, Alastair, please, to put them on the five stands along here. Just at, at random. Just stick them on the stands. We've got some double-sided watch it on the other side. Now, Cindy, I'm going to ask you to pick out, without knowing where the cards are, nobody can know. They're thoroughly mixed. I want you to pick out a card that must be chosen at, at, at random. We have five cards out there. Would somebody over here, perhaps this lady over here, would you call out the name of one of those cards, madam? Jack of Spades. The, which, the Jack? Jack. You would like the Jack of Spades. Cindy, do you think that, especially for me, you could get the Jack of Spades wherever it is? Off you go. Try and find it. The Jack of Spades, please, Cindy. Find the Jack of Spades. <laughs> well, I hope uh, she's right this time. She's gone for that that yellow stand, but of course the colour has nothing to do with it. But this is the envelope she's chosen. I'll tear it open and I'll look inside and yes, there she has chosen the Jack of Spades. Cindy, you are very, very... She's... That's marvellous. Thank you, Cindy. Now, stay with me for a moment. As a matter of fact, she has great show business aspirations, and she tells me that she wants her own show on television. She'd like to be a compare, you see. So I said that she could introduce the next artist. So, Cindy, would you come over and tell us who's next on the show? Come and tell me who's next. Who's next, please? Absolutely right. Anita Harris. Two. 
something where to go to the city and dim all the lights for the wine start the music time to get ready for love Ooh, time to get ready time to get ready time to get ready for love Ladies and gentlemen, I have a problem. Uh, I've got to tell you about it because you're a very sympathetic looking lot. Uh, it's rather serious. I'm short of a pound. Um, <laughs> could, would you really? Oh, a fiver. Uh, no, I'd better not. I've never tried it with a fiver. Um, uh, what about this gentleman over here? Could I borrow a pound from you, sir? You, you sure you don't mind? No, all right. What a nice man. This is terribly kind of you. Now, you, I, of course, you have my word that, uh, that it will be well looked after. I wonder if I could just get you to come out and stand next to me to look after it. I, make him jump over. He looks young and fit. Oh, you're going to move for him. This is awfully kind of you, because it seems that we have all ladies in the gangway here. Would you just come out here and have a, a good look at it so that you'll recognise it if you ever see it again? Right, if you stand about there, sir, very nice of you. Now, obviously, I'm going to give you some security for this. Uh, because uh, it's your... <laughs> and with the security, Alistair, a little collateral. <laughs> this... <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is the collateral, you see. <laughs> and, and I want you... Uh, have you got a bag to put... This is no ordinary coconut, no. you know. Oh, no, this is a VC... A VC a VIC. Yeah. It's a very important coconut, yeah. <laughs> I, I show you a picture of, of Alistair and me buying this at the People's Park in Shanghai. Quite seriously, if you look on there, you can see that's us, but we bought it in the husk. And it's a terrible job getting that husk off. You have to use a matchet and it's, you know, you take your fingers off if you're not careful. So I've taken it out of the husk and that is yours if anything goes wrong with the pounder. Can we put, pop it in the bag? <laughs> now you hang on to that, sir, so that if anything goes wrong with your pound note, the coconut is yours. At least, you, you know, you've got something out of it. Uh, what I mean, uh, anything going wrong, I mean, if it sort of accidentally got torn like that, you see, got a bit torn off it, you see. Uh, then, 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 oh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, oh, that was silly of me. Oh dear, I feel foolish now. I'm, I'm awfully sorry. I, I, no, these things come over me, you know. If I hadn't done that, I'd have gone to a football match and kicked somebody or something like that. <laughs> Look, I tell you what, I, I'd better, now I've done this, I, I will put it in a, an envelope to keep it uh, safe for you, sir, for you to take home, you see, like that, as well as the, the coconut. And then you, you, you know it'll be all right, because as long as you've got the two halves and you can stick them yeah. together. Well, perhaps you better keep the corner. Just put it in your top pocket there safely for the moment. And while the two of us, there's your, the rest of your yes. pound there, you see. So that while, while the two of us are together, we are worth a pound between us. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Unless... Unless something awful happened, you know, like uh, this thing suddenly bursting into flames accidentally, you see. I mean, if, if that suddenly burst into spontaneous uh, combustion like that, then, of course, it, it would be a, a very different... A very different matter. That's curious, isn't it? I, I thought... It's only the counterfeit ones, you know, that are inflammable. Um, no, I'm, I'm afraid uh, this isn't uh, quite going as I expected it, and we have a little problem here, and I'm going to have to um, honour my... Hmm, very interesting. Have we... Uh, I think I'd better put this in the ashtray, because it's beginning to burn my fingers, and I'm beginning to get a little bit worried. Yes, uh... No, we get nothing out of that. No, that's gone. I'm awfully sorry about that. Still, you have got the coconut, yes. I, uh, you, you want to eat it now or take it home with you? Hmm? Oh, no, share it round. I mean, you, you can't... No, um, you'd like to open it now. Yeah. All right, Alistair, can you bring me a paving stone or something? <laughs> oh, he gets carried away, this fella. No, he's, he's got a paving stone and, and a hammer. Right? Now, just give a little twist on the polythene. That's it, because we don't want it to go all over this lady. And pop it on the... That's it. Come down the step, lovely. And hit it with the hammer. A nice big smack on the coconut. That's the way. Hit it. Oh, it's bouncing. And uh, give it a good... And another one, just for luck. Now, look in there. Can you see anything, sir? I'm not going to touch it. Just open up the polythene and hold it towards the camera. I do want the camera to see what's going on. What's that? A piece of, another piece of polythene inside. Take it out, hold it up. Like, that's marvellous to this camera then. Open it up. Can you see what's inside there? I won't touch it. 
Did you take that from inside the coconut? Yes. Sir. Open it up at the end, pull it open like that. Lovely. And it gone quiet. <laughs> It'll be a marvellous one if it works. Take it out. What have we got there? Hold it up to the camera. Find your little bit first. Don't get excited until we've checked the little bit against it. There's yours. Does that match? Do the numbers match? Perfect. There is the number. What's that? End. Well, one one. Uh, the first, uh, J five eight one one two eight. J five eight one one two eight. It matches. I'll give you some sticky tape after the show, or I'll change it for you. Whichever you prefer. The coconut's yours. You can even have the hammer. You can have the whole studio. Thank you very much for helping us. Now, uh, this, uh, Mr. Neville, sir, sir, may I take a moment of your, your precious time to show you a little miracle with these jumbo cards. Now, I am going to ask you, please, there they are, all different, will you take anyone out tonight? Hold on, minute, minute, hold on. Are you going to you want me to pick a card? Yes. You know, it's amazing, because I was having a chat with a mate of mine last week, you see. We haven't, I've not told him this before. Yeah. We were having a chat with a mate of mine last week. He had an argument, you see, because he said, well, if you ever should get invited on David Nixon's show, yes. and he should say, pick an indice, yes. you see, I, he said, I bet if you took the cards off him, without telling him in rehearsal, <laughs> and if you put him down and gave him a bit of that, oh, you see, <laughs> and a bit of that, you see, and then if you yeah. picked an in to see yourself, and if you look that way, we'd yeah. be all right. I think. Yes, I, and I showed it like that, right? Yeah. And I shoved it right up me in to see. Yes. You see, and came back and said, right, now, this, uh, what is that? There's one at every party, isn't there? <laughs> Yes, any magician could say, well, I, I don't know. What, what, what do you want to know? What can what, I do for you? What's the card? What, what is it? Oh, you want to know what that yeah, card is? Yeah. Ah, yes, uh, well, we have our methods, you know. Uh, we, yes, we, I'd have to move over to Plan B. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Plan B. Now, what's Plan B? Ah, yes, Plan B. Now, I never travel without one of these. Right. <laughs> Now, sir, if you would kindly step behind the machine, put your chest flat against it, hands behind your back, yes. and when I say now, I want you to take a deep breath. Right, deep breath, hold it please, absolutely still. Uh, was your card the five of clubs? Yeah. The five of clubs, how does he do it? Pretty good, pretty good. You like that one? Yeah. All right. <laughs> if you didn't like it, you're acting well. <laughs> Robin, I've, I've always, I suppose everybody wants to do something that they, you know, they can't, and I would love to have been a straight actor in many ways. You've done the, the lot, haven't you, as well as the comedy? Yeah, I've done me Shakespeare and me Ibsen, Chekhov, and occasional striptease and things like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the right relief. Yes. <laughs> Ever done pantomime? Ah, no, you got me on that one. That's one thing I've not done. Well, you're a character who would enjoy pantomime, really. The atmosphere is super. I love pantomime because, the, you know, it's the old traditional stuff, and the, the old illusions can be done, and you can work them into the story. Now, we did Cinderella at the Wimbledon Theatre, last Christmas and I played Cinder's father, Baron Harlap, you know, and Alastair was the, Baron, the Baron's valet and Peter Kay played Buttons and I'd like to show you the kind of magic that we did, Robin, mm -hmm. uh, the, the sort of thing we worked into the show. Now this scene opens with Cinderella played here by Anita and Buttons. Watch very carefully. Right, ladies and gentlemen, if you care to step this way, this is the last call in our conducted tour of this historical edifice. Buttons, Buttons, Cinderella and I have come to the conclusion that you're diddling us. Diddling you? Mm. Alice there, Cinders, have you ever heard my honesty questioned? I've never even heard it mentioned. <laughs> Buttons, we've paid you sixpence each for a conducted tour around one of England's historical homes. Well, isn't this... An historical home? Well, yes, but we live here. <laughs> <laughs> don't be ashamed, dear, don't be ashamed. I mean, I'll have you know that this place is steeped in history. I mean, look at this. You see this? This is an ancient antique instrument. Oh, fiendish torture. What is it? It's called the Huey Green. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Huey. And in this, they used to... I'll never get on that show. You they used to... They used to imprison all the thieves and villains. They did? And people were what took liberties with the public. Oh. And I'll tell you another thing. Yuri Geller's been in here four times. Oh. <laughs> They've forgotten him. Never mind. <laughs> you could come up to date with that. Buttons, how does this work? How does it work? I will show you, young man. Now then. <laughs> Glenda Jackson, step this way. Now, if you would care to lift the top, yes, I'll show you. The thief, villain, or liberty taker would put his hands in there. 
his head in there. <laughs> and then they'd lower it down, lower it over my head and that. Ah, careful, careful. I didn't mean it when I said that. Did I? <laughs> right, now you see the chains at the yes. end? What, yes, tie them round as tight as you can. Oh, wow. Tighter the better. Right. That's it. Marvellous. You see, once they were tied, he was completely fettered. He couldn't move, you see. <laughs> now we got some hurts. Here, what are you doing? <laughs> here! Right. Ooh, here! Get down, get down, get down, get down, get There's your cinder, cinder, Thank there's you. mine. Bye bye, button. That'll teach you to take liberty. You remember the lines. No, no. <laughs> get back to Magpie. Now. Hello, my fine fettered friend. Hello, what are you friend. doing in there? I'm stuck. Mm. I'm waiting for a bus. I oh, forgot the line, sorry. The last one went out. No, you're not really. You said that to make me laugh, didn't you? Yes, didn't, I said to make them laugh. <coughs> didn't, didn't work, did it? No. You got yourself stuck. Ah, ah. Does it hurt when I do that? It does. I expect you want me to get you out, don't you? Oh, please, Baron. It's very embarrassing for him, you see, because the hole's only that big and his head's too big to go through, you see. Hey? Ever since what I said about him. <laughs> so I'm going to get him out of there because he's very embarrassing. I'm going to do it without taking the chains off and without severing his head from his body unless it becomes absolutely necessary. <laughs> now, oh, all we do, we use the magic table Oh, no, be this. careful. I've got to be back in Butlins on Tuesday. You said you'd get that in. I've got it in. And one little <laughs> magic word. And watch very carefully. Oh, no, hey, no, please, no. be careful. And look at oh. that. Through that. <laughs> I've got to own up, that was marvellous. Oh, no, any genius could have done it, really. <laughs> i tell you what we'll do. Let's do the one we did in pantomime, the one we used to look forward to. You mean the one with the... Laundry basket. Oh, great. Alistair, could we have the laundry basket, please? The magic laundry basket. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alistair. There it is, just a basket. Turn it round, please. That's the way. Now we'll open it up. Nothing inside, except a lot of old dirty washing. Will you step inside, please? And walk around. Make sure there's nothing there. All right. <laughs> That's the way. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it does work hard. You all right, Buttons? Yep. All right, the barn door, please. Now, this is the barn door, which has to go round that way because of the hinges. And so we'll open up the barn door like this, pull it along in front like that. May we have the feather duster, please? Thank you. The feather duster goes over the top like this and along the back. Basket. Oh, basket, how dare you? <laughs> it's Widow Cranky herself. <laughs> Thank you very Thanks a lot, mate. Thank you, Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you See you next week, same time. Bye now. Thank you.